Right now, Joel Embiid is the league MVP. He has been the best player in the NBA. And once again, last night, he puts it on display for everybody to see. What is going on, everyone? RB here. Welcome into Philly Take with RB. Hit the like button if you enjoy this content. Subscribe by hitting that red button down below. Hit the bell so you don't miss any of the coverage. We are live every single Sixers game, YouTube, and playback. If you were not in the show last night, man, you missed a crazy one. The Sixers somehow, someway find a way to yet again erase another improbable deficit. They come all the way back from down 21 a game where it felt like they couldn't get it below eight. They couldn't get the lead below eight, and they finally cut it. They come back and win it in the final moments. Joel Embiid with another game winner. I just, I'm at a loss for words. You know, I was losing my mind last night. When I think about it, when I put it into perspective, you know, we can talk about this game because, yes, it was an awful game. That's that's the crazy part. It didn't feel like one of those games you were going to win. But this Sixers team pulls it out. Joel Embiid has been the best player in the NBA this year. Uh, quite frankly, I'm try- I'm tired of all the disrespect that he gets. It's just, it's it's nuts. I mean, he's just unbelievable. He is unbelievable. Look at this photo, man. Game winner, Joel Embiid, Kobe-esque. We're going to take a look at it. We'll talk a little bit more about this game, how it went down in the final minutes. Um, but man, Joel Embiid has just been absolutely out of this world. Out of this world, 120 the last three games, another 39-point performance, and the Sixers didn't even lead in this game until they won. The first time they led in this game is when they won at the end, so, you know, it's just absolutely unbelievable. Before we get into this more, though, shout out to the sponsor here of today's show, Manscaped. Manscaped has entered the market of beard products. They're revolutionizing men's grooming with their brand new brand new beard hedger pro kit it's a cordless trimmer has a rotary reel that gives you 20 different hair cutting lengths with one guard yes you heard that right 20 different lengths with one guard it's waterproof has a titanium coated t-blade that is tough on the hair but smooth on the face leading to better efficiency they have all these different products that it comes with you know beard shampoo beard balm beard oil all that stuff that helps the overall shape and health of the beard their kit has three free gifts you know beard brush comb scissors all that stuff comes with their brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. So if you want to check this bad boy out, go down low to the description, click the link, use promo code Philly Take Upon Checkout, get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. All right, man, let's talk about this because, you know, Joel Embiid is absolutely insane. Sixers are now 44 and 22. They're peaking yet again at the right time. This is like the third time this year that you've really felt like, okay, they're on a run here, you know, and they've won 10 out of 13. They're one game behind Boston. My craziest feeling about this game last night, again, is that it just, in years prior, the Sixers don't win that game. I'm not saying the Sixers are the favorite. I'm not saying that they're going to win it all or that they're going to get past the second round finally. All I'm saying is that this team has a different feel to it. They've they've matured. They've grown. They don't win that game in years past. They won it last night, and really it's because Joel Embiid continues to pull his weight. He's the MVP, okay? I was going to put out a piece about Joel and why he should be MVP and all this stuff. He just made my point even more. He made it 10 times easier for me, man. He made it 10 times easier for me. I mean, that performance, I I know it was against the Blazers. It was on a Friday night. Guys didn't look interested. You know, Harden and Maxi didn't necessarily have the best games. All right, they didn't necessarily play well, but it didn't matter because Embiid with another 39-point performance, 13 for 20, Seven boards, four assists, two sills, three blocks. I mean, he got, you know, some uh, bench production. You look at the Blazers. I mean, Anthony Simons was absolutely ridiculous last night. Grant, Lillard, all of them. Embiid wills the Sixers to the win. Now, again, Embiid said it after the game. You can't keep coming back from behind and playing like that. Uh, But just the fact he was able to do that and win that game when it didn't seem attainable was awesome. Uh, Here was the MVP ladder. Uh, from yesterday, before this game put out by the NBA, Jokic number one and B2, I, I've had enough. I've had enough. Stop trying to fool yourselves with the numbers. Stop. All right? Not taking anything away from Jokic or the Nuggets or what they've done this year. They've had a great year. Jokic is a great player. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. Here's what I'm telling you. If you watch the damn games, Joel Embiid has been 
the show of the league this year. He's now averaging 33.4 points per game, a league lead. Do you know how hard it is to keep that up? He's a center. He's seven foot. He puts the ball on the floor, double teams, and he wins the game. I literally called it on the show last night. I said he's going to get trapped, double teams. Didn't matter. Even if Bede puts an Instagram post up after the game, he says Kobe. That's what it was. That's what it looked like. Rest in peace to his soul, man. That looked like Kobe right there. But this is Joel Embiid, a seven-foot center. It's unreal. Here's what Harden had to say on the game winner. He says something that he works on every day. That's why he's MVP of the league. Everybody else knows it, man. Here's a quote from George Niang I really liked. He says, uh, I hope so. I don't know if you'll ever find any more centers that can do all that. He can pass, dribble, shoot, fade away. Someone once said his footwork and mid range is like Kobe, rest in peace. I can't argue with that. The moves that he's doing at seven feet. I'm like six, eight, six, seven. How does that work again? It's impressive. I think we should all appreciate having him around and not taking it for granted because he's one of the special ones. Man, if I don't say that, every single piece of content I put out, every live stream video, I'm always saying is do not take this for granted. You are watching one of the greatest shows on earth. This is Joel Embiid. I'm so tired. Like, I don't even entertain it anymore because it's it's below that level. You know, Joel, I, despite what they say, despite how much they hate, he is just unbelievable. Every night, night in, night out, we watch these games. We cover this team every day, and the people are always in the comments. You know, like, it, you can see it. Like, you can see the growth, the maturity of Embiid. He's just, he's a leader, man. He's a leader. That's what he is. Uh, before we take a, a higher look at this final couple minutes, this breakdown, I want to point out one other thing about this game because honestly, nothing else matters to me. The Thibel stuff, I don't care. The Sixers got the win on a Friday night in March when they looked uninterested and they, they get another game in the win column. They get closer to the second seed. Doc Rivers, kudos to him. Kudos to Doc. He made a big adjustment last night. He doesn't play Tobias. He doesn't play PJ in the final, you know, five, six minutes, whatever it was. Sixers come back and win the game. I'm not saying it's a coincidence, but maybe it is. All right. You see, you see what the more efficient lineup is. He kept Niang and Melton in, made a huge impact. Doc has been coaching his balls off the last week or two. Shout out to Doc Rivers. All right. Let's look at this, uh, these final minutes because this was insane, man. You got Harden with that big shot right there. And then, you know, <clears throat> every possession was just back and forth. And another thing I want to say, too, is that I don't you usually talk about the refs anymore because it, it's regular at this point. It is what it is. Scott Foster did his best to try to make the Sixers lose this game. I'm like Van Vliet right now. Give me the font. All right. Scott Foster had about six terrible calls in the final, you know, half of the fourth quarter. It was awful. But the Sixers muscled through it. Great D by Maxi right there. I mean, the Sixers, you know. When they want to play defense, when they're locked in, they can do it. 15-2 run at the end. And, you know, see right there how Joel and B came up on that? I tweeted it early on. Sixers were playing drop coverage. Not going to work. I said this against the Mavs, against other teams. You're playing elite guard play. You can't play drop coverage against Dame Lillard. Are you out of your mind? Sixers were leaving guys wide open early in this game. And, you know, they just weren't playing smart. They didn't look interested they're going to have to, you know, adjust some things come playoff time. And it was tough. There's uh, Nurkic, who, by the way, missed like four free throws in the last couple minutes. That was huge. Ball doesn't lie. Those were not fouls. Those were not fouls. And, man, it was just, it was nuts. It was nuts. And then they call that offensive foul on James. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Here's where it gets real. After that foul, I'm like, all right, Sixers are not going to win this because of Scott Foster. Lillard hits the step back. You're like, all right. James running a two-man game. Here's Joel. Maxi was a little bit hesitant in this game. I wish he was a little more on top of it, but look at that. The blow-by speed right there. It doesn't matter. Maxi can do that every time. I want to I want to continue to see him get more touches, man. I mean, Maxi can do it at any point in the game against any defender. Against any defender as well. And then look at that. That was definitely a walk. That was a walk, and they call it def a uh, defensive foul and one. Nurkic finally hits the free throw. And, you know, this is where it all came down to, man. Sixers end up getting a pair of free throws. Maxi knocks him down. And look at this. This is what I mean. This is what Jokic can't do. And B can do it when he wants. Look at that. You see how B came up? No drop coverage anymore late in the game. He came up and said, I'm stuffing the ball right there. 
Lillard had to go the other way. And what a play by DeAnthony Melton, man. And then I caught it. I said, Joel Embiid isolated on an island. I knew he was going to get trapped. I knew they would try to put it in somebody else's hands. It didn't even matter, though. Look at that. Puts him in the spin cycle. Kobe-esque. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That is prime time right there. That is the best show on the planet right now. Meanwhile, last night in Denver, Nikola Jokic uh, had an all-worldly 37-point triple-double. Congratulations to him. Another great game. But they lost to the 17-win Spurs. Wow, what a coincidence. Spurs players shot 19 for 32 against Jokic last night. Let's watch a couple of these plays. Joel Embiid made a big block on Dame later in the game. Here's what Jokic did in San Antonio. You're telling me this is the MVP. Stop letting the numbers fool you. Stop letting the numbers fool you. I've had enough. Put those to the side. If you watch both of these players and the NBA media voters, they just don't want Joel to win. And I don't think Sixer fans are saying, you know, Jokic doesn't have a case, but right now, Joel has been the greatest. And if he leads this team through March and continues to get big wins in a tough schedule, Embiid has to win the MVP. Here's a recent stretch from Jokic. This is what he did before last night over the last four games. 14, 11, 10, 18, 18, and 10, 17, 13, 9. People were tweeting at me saying this was prime Ben Simmons. I mean, come on now. Come on. Here's what Joel has done. <laughs> Third. I mean, come on, man. It's really not that hard to see. If Embiid doesn't get catapulted up to the top of the list, I already know there's bias, but if he doesn't get catapulted up, it's just ridiculous at this point. We need to stop letting these numbers fool us. I don't care about this. Watch the game. When you give the ball to your guy on the last second and say, go win the game, and he does a spin cycle uh, fade away off the dribble against two defenders, he's a seven-foot center. That is MVP play right there. That's cold-blooded. And he gets it done. But those are just all my thoughts. Give me all yours down below in the comments section. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And with that being said, I will catch you all on the next one. Peace.